In this video, John outlines the improved and unimproved pastures on his property and indicates the impact of oversowing and top dressing. The key fact here is he started doing some measurement and the on-farm measurement required some cage cutting. We've actually created some other videos on how you could do cage cuts on your own property, but here we find out how they were used at Inverary Station. The first thing we needed to do was to start to divide it up into some sort of manageable units and you'll see there are five there. The river flats were the lowest ones along the Ashburton River. The highest terraces were up to about 700 metres. And the improved hill country, which was basically the front country I suppose, and the unimproved hill country which was out the back, and then there was extensive high country. Today I'm not going to talk about the extensive high country at all, uh, it's not part of this talk, but it's there, it's about half of the property. So most of my talks are going to talk around the improved hill country and the unimproved hill country, about 19% of the property each, about 800 hectares, so quite a significant area. Within those broad areas of 800 hectares, we looked at every block. We went in there and we separated it out. And these were, you know, sort of looked at a map and a, a bit of a guess. But basically, we were able to put it into five, six different categories, and you see them there. So this particular block, which is just a theoretical block, I guess, that I put up there, 28% of it is in the rolling, su rolling sunny. But what's the black? These hill country places are not all grazing, so this is farmer level science. We grab an old iron, or it might have been an old hammer or something, stuck it on a bit of string, and Bert and I started at the top of the block. And I biffed the hammer in front of me, and he walked down and he said, scrub. I biffed it again, walked down, and he said, tussock. And then he said, pasture and so on. And we actually were able to build up, in that way, a bit of a picture about what was in the block. And we did that for a number of blocks to a stage where our eyes were calibrated and we could give, give areas reasonable changes. Not perfect science, but it doesn't need to be perfect science. But one of the interesting things about that was that uh, we came up with the figure that 69% of our block was grazable, but 31% was in scrub, shingle, whatever. So the pasture cage measurement program, we had 35 cages. See them there, that one's been built by the local garage. At its peak in, the, in that first year, cut uh, every six weeks. You'll see the periods there. And that gave us a pretty good feel. Six weeks was pretty good, you know, early spring, late spring, and so on. And for a start, I weighed and dried them, as I said, in head office's oven. Later on, uh, it was brought back here and be able to do much more interesting stuff around pasture composition and ME as well. So with all that information, we're able to start to create some profiles. And you'll see here, the blue line is the improved hill country. That's stuff that's had fertiliser on, seed and so on. And below it is the unimproved hill. Uh, and that's, well some of that was previously improved, it just gets intermittent fertiliser. But for um, purposes, there's quite a clear difference between the two. And you'll see there's quite an advantage to that improved uh, hill country, but you also see that it doesn't really change the allocation of seasonal growth. There's not a lot more growth in the shoulders of the season, which is the early spring uh, and in the autumn, than, than the other stuff there. So one of the alternatives we, we look at from time to time, to time is that we should go in and do some more over and top dressing. But more or less, that tends to just duplicate and accentuate our problem. The take home message from this video being improving the hill country hadn't actually improved the pasture supply curve at Inverary Station.